Hey everybody, Dave here and thanks so much for joining me for another video. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing, an installation and a review of the Centerpoint AXC crank cocking device. So stick around. Okay, let's go through the unboxing together. I got this because uh, I just had surgery and uh, I'm unable to pull the uh, crossbow back that I have. I have a Amp 415. If you haven't seen that review, um, I'll put it in the end screen so you can just click on it and uh, I, I have an unboxing and uh, you know, share with you a little bit about why I, I picked the uh, Centerpoint Amp 415. I also do a uh, full ins installation, putting it all together for you. So if you're, you're, you know, it's something you want to check out, um, just check it out in the end screen at the end of the video. I'll put that link in there for you. And I'll put it in the description as well. All right, so let's see what we've got here. <clears throat> we've got the main body and the uh, string sled. Uh, this is aluminum. All this is aluminum, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, the string looks fairly, fairly strong. Looks like a zingit, um, which is uh, rated probably for like 600 pounds. I don't know the rating. I'm just estimating. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty strong. It's got some nice uh, pulleys right here that uh, really rotate freely. So that's the main body right there, and. There's not much to this. Basically, we have the crank, and we also, of course, have our manual right here. And then we have the uh, tools and uh, the bracket. Now, this this is designed to fit. Uh, actually, there is no tools tools in this one, so. You're just going to need, I don't know where that is. Anyway, that's surprising. But um, we have some Allen wrenches. It's going to take a few Allen wrenches here. Uh, they did put some uh, blue Loctite on this screw. You can see it there. Uh, so that's a good feature. But this, this is designed to fit on an AR style crossbow stock. All right. And... Uh, what you're going to do is just clamp this on. This main piece will slide in here like this. All right. And then once it's in there, just the weight of the string pulling against this will keep it secured. It has a uh, release here. And you can put the handle on either side. Now, one of the things is when you put the handle on here, uh, you're going to have to test it first. And as you test it, you will see if the handle comes around, if it hits the string, as the string comes up, if the handle is going to hit the string, what you're going to have to do is back everything down and then reverse the handle 180 degrees to face the other way. So when you bring it around, it, it, it cocks before the string and the handle hit. But we'll go into that a little later. I'll show you what that's, that's like. So with that, let's start doing assembly on the bow. So this is a pretty straightforward installation. It's going to mount right here on the tube of this AR style stock. And uh, let me just show you what it's compatible with. So if you want to pause the video, you can see if this will fit your crossbow. This is designed for center point, And these are all the bows that it's compatible with. Okay. So with that out of the way, it's... Uh, Pretty easy to put on. It's only two bolts and then the crank handle. So this portion here with the square is going to go on top just like that. This bottom portion with the cutout is going to go on the bottom. And just set up these screws, get them in and get them tight. Finger tight, just like this. Now the wrenches, they, they don't supply wrenches with this because uh, this can only fit on a center point bow. And when they sent you the bow, they sent you a full set of Allen wrenches just like this one. So uh, if you just go back into your box, make sure you don't throw them out. Uh, and then you're just going to tighten these back and forth equally on each side. 
um, a lot like you do a scope mount. Uh, you don't want one side too far and then the other side other way so everything's twisted. So just take your time, go back and forth, pretty easy. Now one of the things uh, it recommends to do is to put it right up against the receiver end here of the uh, stock uh, so that you know the weight when, once everything's being cocked everything is against something solid the problem with that is there's there's I guess there's enough room to to work in uh, if you wanted to just use a regular uh, cocking device or rope cocking device uh, but the problem is you know if I'm out in a hunting situation I've got to reload I don't want to be working that in and out like that um, and be flailing all over the place so I'm going to bring it back just about an eighth of an inch and again I am just doing this you know I encourage you to follow the instructions completely and you know once you get this mounted uh, you may just want to be using the cocking device all the time and so you know avoiding the, the uh, rope cocker but when I'm out in the field I'll, I'll pretty much be using the rope cocker for uh, if I need to take a second shot because I want to be able to do it quickly. Now once this is on there, there is some play in here. So you want to line it up before you tighten everything down so that it is parallel with the top of this. All right, and once it's there, you can give it a final tightening and it's on there pretty good. So let's just give that a final snug do the same thing on this side and it really grips that tube so I don't think that's going to be a problem for me but again you know make sure you follow the uh, the directions completely because I don't want to be responsible for any modifications you might do all right so with that on uh, let's get moving to the uh, handle mount it's very simple okay so once you uh, have mounted the receiver on the tube then what you're going to need to do is put the handle on the crank. And so first thing you want to do is make sure that this string sled is facing the correct way, which is this way. Um, that's going to orient uh, which side you want to put the handle on. So I am right-handed, so I like to crank with my right hand. So I'm going to be mounting the handle on the right side. Now you can see that there's a, a little pin here. To set everything and that's going to line up with one of these holes either either way and then what you're going to do is take this screw with the blue Loctite on it and get that started right in the center there take your Allen wrench and tighten it up now I wouldn't go crazy with this because you may have to take it off okay you want to make sure that the pin is lined up and everything's solid on there. And that's it. So, let's put it on the bow and crank it up. Okay, in order to cock the bow, what you're going to need to do is set the bow facing down on the ground like this. And you're going to need to put your foot in the stirrup in order to stabilize it. Then what you're going to do is take the cranking device and hook it right into the bracket on the buttstock, just like that. Now, you're going to want to make sure that these catches are facing down. And what you do is press the release here. You can actually just unwind it, get it carefully over the scope. And then you're going to hook it on the string, just like that. You're going to want to center it. You're going to also want to make sure that the crossbow is set to fire, not safety. All right. And at this point, you can just start, make sure it's off the scoop, just start winding it up. There's a little work. It's quite a bit of pull on this.
gets easier as you go. You gotta pull it back. Now if you see right here, the crank is actually going to hit the string. So what I need to do is back it off and let it lock again and move that crank so the handle faces the other way. So I'll just move that handle to the other side, just like that. Put that back in my pocket. Now when it comes around, you see it'll miss the string. Now once you pull back completely, what you do is you'll press the release and slowly back it down to make sure that it is caught. And it is. Now you're going to want to take this string sled off and I just let the weight pull it back down again I do not want to get my fingers in front of that string it just takes a couple extra seconds this is why if I'm in a hunting situation I'm going to make sure I use the rope cocker instead but I'm not at a situation and then this just slides off make sure when you put it down it's not all tangled because that can be a pain. Now at this point we can just knock an arrow and fire. Okay so let me give you my initial thoughts on this cocking device by Centerpoint. Uh, first off it only fits Centerpoint bows. Um, that's not necessarily a negative thing uh, because they designed it to fit just that one. Uh, it does fit very well. Uh, it goes together very easily and um, it's very solidly built. This is all metal right through here. The, the pulleys, everything, shaft, all that is metal. Uh, the only plastic is this very crank on the handle here. So um, that is, is what I really like about it. It is very easy to use. Uh, you will find it some initial um, difficulty getting things started but once it breaks over the cams on the bow uh, it comes back very easily. You do have to have the bow set on fire and when you pull it back all the way it will move to safety automatically. Uh, the only thing is you won't feel it, it won't make like a, a positive click or anything. You'll have to just bring it back all the way till you can't go anymore and then using the release right here you'll just back it off slowly and you'll see that it stays. Uh, one of the things I didn't really like about it is that uh, you'll want to have a tendency to put your hand in front of the string to take the string sled off. And um, I will never do that. Uh, if I can consciously think about it, I, I, I won't put my hand in front of a crossbow string because it could take your finger or your thumb right off or damage you pretty good if something happened to let go. Uh, you know. So what I do is I just crank it down and let the weight of it come down enough to where I can you know uh, move either move the bow so I can grab it and flip it off or whatever uh, but so um, it would have been nicer if in my opinion if instead of a sled like this they just had the two hooks because then I could just reach underneath the string and unhook them and it would have been a whole lot easier uh, the other thing is when you're cranking this back like say now uh, it does get tangled very easily so you're not going to store it in your pack like this uh, or even just throw it on a table or a shooting table or, or on the ground or something when you're out at the range because it will get tangled very easily. Uh, one of the things I, I do is I crank it up but you've got to have pressure on this when you crank it back in like this because they put the brought the string through in the pulleys to the knots inside and so now if there's not pressure these can get caught around those knots and it begins to double wind inside and out where it's not designed to. It's designed to just slide through back here and so it would have been better I think if they had moved this support hole for the center up front away from those knots but it is what it is. Uh, once you get it set up and you get the handle set properly it works fine. 
Um, again, the only the only thing really negative about this, I think, is the fact that it tangles easily. But everything else, uh, this is braided uh, cord, and it looks very strong as well. So um, I think it's a excellent d device. It cost me, I think, it was seventy nine dollars, and uh, most other cocking devices like this are over a hundred. So the price point is really good. I think uh, it's going to allow me to hunt this next week because I, I wouldn't be able to pull back my bow otherwise. And it's the last day here of uh, archery deer season in Pennsylvania. So um, for that, it was well worth it. And again, when you're at the range, instead of using that rope cocker constantly, this can come in handy. And I'm sure the more I use it, the, uh, the easier it will be for me to um, um, you know figure out how it works and uh, so but I like the fact that it's removed from the bow and I can go in my pack or be set on the ground or something because this is kind of hefty and we don't need one more thing uh, on a bow to make that weight extra so uh, there's my thoughts I would rate this I'd probably uh, say a 7 out of 10 um, based on, on the entanglement, um, the fact that this is a sled instead of hooks, um, a couple of things like that. But other than that, uh, I think it's uh, well worth the cost. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us today and watch our video. We hope it was helpful to you. I hope it, it helped you decide whether it's something you might need for your crossbow. And uh, I hope it was helpful to see walk through the installation so you can see just how it goes together. You know, if you like our content, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel. It would mean so much. And also hit that notification bell so you'd be up to date on all the videos as soon as they come out. And uh, give us a thumbs up if you would too. I'd really appreciate it. So as I wrap up this video, let me just share this one thought with you. And that is that, you know, at this point in time with my physical uh, limitations because of my surgery, I needed to have a crank that was going to do all the work for me. Uh, I mean, I, I turned the handle, but really it was the leverage and the, the actual pulley system that did the work for me. And so, you know, that's a lot like it is with you and I and God. You know, we try so hard doing things and trying to do the right thing in order to earn our way to heaven. But you know what? Without God, Without his forgiveness, without what Jesus did on the cross, all those works are really ineffective. You know, in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 64, verse 6, it says this, and let me read it to you. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. So what's that saying is this, that as much as you and I try to be righteous, as much as we try and do the right thing, because of the sin in our life, we are dirty in our souls. And so, you know, it's almost like trying to clean something with a dirty rag. You know, to God, all our good deeds appear as dirty rags because we have so much other sin in our life. And so... The only way that you and I can be truly sinless before God is by accepting the work that Jesus did on the cross. That's why Christ came. He came to forgive us of our sins, to die in our place, to take the penalty for our sins, that you and I might live, you and I might have our sins forgiven, and even greater than that, have a relationship with God that lasts through all eternity. You know, we can't get to heaven on our own, no matter how hard we try, because there's always sin in our life. The only way to get that sin forgiven is to receive what Jesus Christ did on the cross and begin a relationship with God. And you know, if you're not sure how to do that, that's okay. I've written a short book uh, that I want to give to you for free. It's in the description below. All my books are in the description below. But this one is called Growing Deep, and it talks a little bit about my life, talks a little bit about how the Bible shows you the way to get to God through a relationship with Jesus Christ specifically. And so, you know, I'd encourage you to check out that book. You know, if you've been trying and striving your whole life to do the right thing, 
you know, it's still not good enough for you and I to get to heaven because of all the other sin that blocks our path. So I encourage you to check out the book today and see what the Bible has to say about you developing a relationship with God and having your sins forgiven. Guys, thanks so much for joining me. I hope the video again was helpful to you and uh, I hope you like our content. And if you do, leave a comment. Let us know about it. We'd really appreciate it. Until next time, remember, God loves you more than you could ever know. So, until the next video, God bless and get outdoors.